Well, how you doing, everyone? Well, another update on the shop. I got uh, some of the sheetrock up, and um, of course, the electric passed, so we're all set with the electric. Uh, and we've also got um, most of the insulation up. Uh, I've got uh, two more rolls, well, three rolls to put up. I got to go pick up another one. But um, the two side walls are done, the back wall is done, and the front wall where the garage door is, is still got to be done. I've got uh, maybe 10 sheets left to put up on the walls, and then, uh, and then I think we'll call, it, uh, we'll call it quits on that for a little while. Uh, as you can see up there, we still haven't done the ceiling, and that's going to take uh, two people at least. Um, this three, this five eight sheet rock, the fire code stuff. It's about seventy pounds a sheet. I'm not comfortable with um, trying to balance that stuff on my shoulder, climb up a ten, you know, eight foot ladder, and and try and screw seventy pound sheets of sheet rock four by eight onto uh, onto these studs. Uh, they're all on two foot centers and I'm not comfortable with that either. So what I'm probably going to do, it's a little more expense, but I think it'll, uh, it'll make it go a little faster and, and it'll be a little bit neater and, uh, and I've got some time to spend. Uh, I'm going to put one by three, uh, 12 inches on center across the whole uh, 20, 28 feet. Uh, 27, 28 feet, and it'll go the full width of the uh, of the shop, and then that'll make it a lot easier to uh, to screw that stuff up. This way, I can put two nails every 12 inches on the uh, sheetrock, and uh, won't be worried if that stuff's going to fall off the ceiling. Because, as I mentioned before, I'm going to get uh, insulation, and I'm going to blow it in on on the top probably about six inches. I've got to get uh, ventilation on between every joy, every, uh, every truss that'll allow air to come in from the, from the eaves outside and uh, circulate. And then we'll also be putting a, uh, a roof vent on, on the ceiling. Uh, hadn't thought about that when I ran the electric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to run another, another, another two lines. Well, two, two outlets. Uh, one will be for the for the roof vent, and one will be for the garage door opener. <laughs> I never thought about putting that in there. So I was over there one day and wanted to open the garage door, push the button, and right away realized that the garage door won't go up without electricity. So I'll I'll put a I'll run another outlet up there that. I'll just pick up off one of the closest ones here on the wall, probably probably the one that's off of the drill press there, maybe. But uh, so that's that's where we're at. Uh, it's, it's coming along, it's coming along slow. Um, managed to get a little tendon elbow, tennis elbow in the, in the process. So I'm trying to rest up on that now and, and uh, give that a chance to to heal up so I can get back on this and, and put the other 10 sheets of sheetrock up all the way around. And then um, I'll mud that and, and put the, you know, tape the seams, uh, leave them a little bit lower than the, than the corners. Uh, and get, get a coat of primer on this so that the dampness don't soak into the into the uh, into the sheetrock, and then uh, I'm shopping now for uh, an air conditioner, heating in there. Uh, need about mm, fourteen thousand BTU. Uh, hopefully, I can find a fourteen thousand BTU that will fit in that window. Uh, don't know if that's gonna if that's gonna happen or not. If I can find one that size uh, that'll fit in that opening. Uh, if not, you know, we'll, we'll do something else, and that's okay. Uh, decided to um, put my four-bag dust collector over in that far corner over there, 
and I got a remote start for it. And what I'm going to do is, and it's RF type, so it shouldn't have any trouble going through a wall. Uh, I'm going to put an enclosure around it with some, uh, I don't know, maybe one micron filters, two micron filters to let the air back out into the shop that I use uh, when it runs to the, each piece of equipment. I'm looking for uh, some spiral ducting as well to, to run drops down to each, each machine. Um, so anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, still got quite a bit to go. I imagine it's going to take me uh, several months to, to get this thing done. I don't know if I'll be doing a whole lot of woodworking this summer. But um, definitely uh, come fall, I'll have heat and I'll have my electric, I'll have my lighting, I'll have uh, everything all set to go. And um, I've got to build my outfeed tables, which I decided to, um, to build cabinets for that. The, uh, the outfeed setup is going to be um, pretty big, I think, more so than, than most home shops would use. Uh, my table store uh, is 27 by 45 inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build uh, a series of cabinets that will go around it. Uh, <clears throat> one will be, uh, this way it will be uh, 72 inches and there will be two cabinets with slide out drawers. And then the same thing on the other side will be 48 by, or 45 by 45 on, uh, on the other side of the table saw. And then something on this side. So I'm going to try and get a lot of drawers in that space for the outfeed sections and uh, and that'll that'll that space that's not that's dead anyway so what I'll it'll it'll let me not have to put cabinets on this wall or maybe that wall we'll see how that all works out uh, I'd like to have as much open space over here as I can uh, for two workbenches. One woodwork bench just for doing woodworking and another one is going to be an assembly table. And uh, so the uh, the handwork, all the hand planing and, and um, you know stuff like that will be done over on that side and uh, machining, planing, joining, table saw cutting and all will be done on this side of the shop. Um, Let's see what else have we got going on here. Uh, I think that's about it, really. Oh, um, one day here, my 12-inch 12, 12 compound miter saw took a flying leap off of its, its perch, and it bent the micro adjust on it and also the depth stop screw. So I'm going to have to get, get with Milwaukee and try and get replacement parts for that. Hopefully that'll, that'll come in under a hundred bucks. Uh, eh, just one of, the, one of the things that happen, I guess, when you, when you move everything a thousand miles and, and try and get it set up and, and work with everything in the same space you're trying to work in. So, uh, so that's about it. Uh, I'll, try and walk the uh, camera around and let you see where we're at a little better and um, pardon my ugly face but uh, here's um, there's that side wall with the door in it that goes outside and uh, right here this is the wall this is where we got to do the sheet the insulation still not too much going on there um, and the ceiling and uh, this is the uh, the other wall uh, opposite the door where I've just got all the insulation up and then you have this whole wall is uh, what three six is seven sheets of sheetrock on that wall and about so far I've got four or five sheets on this other wall so there it is um, Not much else going on here. Uh, still got the appliances here. Managed to uh, 
buy some new ones, uh, not brand new, but I off of Craigslist down in Florida. So I'll, the guy's going to deliver them for me on Sunday. I uh, spoke to him on the phone. So uh, when I get back, all these appliances will go on Craigslist, and I'll see if I can try and get about what I spent down in Florida, six and one, half dozen of the other. You know, it saves me the trouble of having to rent the trailer and uh, and dragging this stuff down there and putting it putting it in and everything. Um, I'll still have to install it, but at least I don't have to drag it down there. So that'll that'll work out a lot better for me. So, all right, well. Y'all take care, and uh, we will talk to you next time after we get back. I imagine it'll be uh, about another two months before I have another update. Okay. Uh, Y'all take care. Bye-bye now.